Hello, my name is Chelsea, and today we're going to be doing a meditation and story. The story is uh, called Stone Soup, and the meditation is going to be about shining our inner light. So let's start by reading our story. Stone Soup. Three soldiers trudged down a road in a strange country. They were on their way home from the wars. Besides being tired, they were hungry. In fact, they had eaten nothing for two days. How I would like a good dinner tonight, said the first, and a bed to sleep in, said the second. But all that is impossible, said the third. We must march on. On they marched. Suddenly, ahead of them, they saw the lights of a village. Maybe we'll find a bite to eat there, said the first, and a loft to sleep in, said the second. No harm in asking, said the third. Now the peasants of that place feared strangers. When they heard that three soldiers were coming down the road, they talked among themselves. Here come three soldiers. Soldiers are always hungry, but we have little enough for ourselves. And they hurried to hide their food. They pushed sacks of barley under the hay and the lofts. They lowered buckets of milk down the wells. They spread old quilts over the carrot bins. They hid their cabbages and potatoes under the bed. They hung their meat in the cellars. They had all they had to eat, and then they waited. The soldiers stopped first at the house of Paul and Francoise. Good evening to you, they said. Could you spare a bit of food for three hungry soldiers? We have no food for ourselves for three days, said Paul. Francoise made a sad face. It has been a poor harvest. The, sol the three soldiers went on to the house of Albert and Louise. Could you spare a bit of food and have you some corner where we could sleep for the night? Oh no, said Albert. We gave all we could spare to soldiers who came before you. Our beds are full, said Louise. At Vincent and Marie's, the answer was the same. It had been a poor harvest and all the grain must be kept for seed. So it went all through the village. Not a peasant had any food to give away. They all had good reasons. One family had used the grain for feed. Another had an old sick father to care for. All had too many mouths to fill. The villagers stood in the street and sighed. They looked as hungry as they could. The three soldiers talked together. Then the first soldier called out, good people, the peasants drew near. We are three hungry soldiers in a strange land. We have asked you for food and you have no food. Well then, we'll have to make stone soup. Peasants stared, stone soup? That would be something to know about. First, we'll need a large iron pot, the soldier said. The peasants brought the largest pot they could find. How else to cook enough? That's none too large, said the soldiers, but it will do. And now water to fill it and a fire to heat it. It took many buckets of water to fill the pot. A fire was built on the village square and the pot was set to boil. And now, if you please, three round, small stones, smooth stones. Those were easy to find. The peasants' eyes grew round as they watched the soldiers drop the stones into the pot. Any soup needs salt and pepper, said the soldiers as they began to stir. Children ran to fetch salt and pepper. Stones like these generally make good soup, but oh, if there were carrots, it would be much better. Well, I think I have a carrot or two, said Francoise, and off she ran. She came back with her apron full of carrots from the bin beneath the red quilt. A good stone soup should have cabbage, said the soldiers as they sliced the carrot into the pot. But no use asking for what you don't have. I think I could find a cabbage somewhere, said Marie, and she hurried home. Back she came with three cabbages from the cupboard under the bed. Oh, if only we had a bit of beef and a few potatoes, this soup would be good enough for a rich man's table. The peasants thought that over. They remembered their potatoes and the sides of beef hanging in the cellars. They ran to fetch them. A rich man's soup and all from a few stones. It seemed like magic. Ah, sighed the soldiers as they stirred in the beef and potatoes. If only we had a little barley and a cup of milk, the soup would be fit for the king himself. Indeed, he asked for just such a soup when last he dined with us. The peasants looked at each other. The soldiers had entertained the king. Well, but no use asking for what you don't have, the soldiers sighed. The peasants brought their barley from the lofts. They brought their milk from the wells. The soldiers stirred the barley and the milk into the steaming broth while the peasants stared. At last, the soup was ready. All of you shall taste, the soldier said, but first a table must be set. Great tables were placed in the square and all around were lighted torches. Such a soup, how good it smelled, truly fit for a king. But then the peasants asked themselves, would not such a soup require bread and a roast and cider? 
Soon a banquet was spread and everyone sat down to eat. Never had there been such a feast. Never had the peasants tasted such soup and fancy made from stones. They ate and drank and ate and drank. And after that, they danced. They danced and sang far into the night. At last, they were tired. Then the three soldiers asked, is there not a loft where we could sleep? Let three such wise and splendid gentlemen sleep in a loft indeed. They must have the best beds in the village. So the first soldier slept in the priest's house, the second soldier slept in the baker's house, and the third soldier slept in the mayor's house. In the morning, the whole village gathered in the square to give them a send off. Many thanks for what you have taught us, the peasant said to the soldiers. We shall never go hungry now that we know how to make soup from stones. Oh, it's all in knowing how, said the soldiers, and off they went down the road. Such men don't grow on every bush, is what the people there are saying. And that is the end of our story. So here are the questions for you and your family. Why were the villagers shut up in their homes and untrusting of strangers? At the beginning of the story, they were asking about um, what, why couldn't they have food? They were going there asking people for food and everyone was saying, no, no, they don't have any food. Why were they saying that? At the end, the story changes and they're suddenly given very comfortable places to sleep. What changed that situation? Why were the people suddenly willing to give them a place to sleep? All right, now let us do our meditation. So if you will, find a comfortable spot and either lay down or sit comfortably and we'll listen to our bell before we get started. Gently close your eyes and softly repeat, I am still. Notice your body relax instantly and easily. Allow your body to sink down in your bed or on the floor or in the chair further and further as your muscles become soft and limp. It feels so comfortable. Your body just seems to relax more and more with each and every word you hear. Imagine now a small sparkle somewhere deep inside your heart. The small sparkle begins to glow brighter now and you feel it reaching up and expanding out. The glow becomes brighter and brighter, filling up your chest. You feel the warmth spreading out, touching your tummy, your shoulders, getting bigger and bigger, getting brighter and brighter, glowing all the way down to your toes. Now feel your whole body glowing like a radiant star shining out. This wonderful light is your light, your shining light, your personal brilliance. It is all the love in your heart. It is all your possibilities and your possibilities are endless. Shine your light wherever you go. Sharing your light makes others happy and it makes you happy as well. It's a wonderful feeling to share your light and by doing so you become a good example to them. When you shine your light brightly, it lets others know that it's okay for them to shine their light brightly too. When we all do this, it makes the world a more beautiful, peaceful place. Sharing your light can be as simple as sharing your smile or doing a kind deed. Holding a happy thought about someone or send a happy wish to someone who's feeling sad. It can mean helping someone who is younger than you or not as strong as you. All of this is shining your light and you will discover a wonderful, warm, fuzzy feeling inside your heart when you do this. This wonderful feeling comes from doing what you were created to do feeling and spreading joy and love. Sharing your light means sharing the real you and being who you truly are. It means standing up for what is right and making the choices that feel right in your heart. Now allow that bright light inside to become like a gentle shower of fireworks. See how beautiful and amazing you are? You light up the sky. 
As the fireworks sizzle, sizzle and flare down, imagine your brilliant light touching the heart of every person you know and will meet. They feel happier just because they know you. How wonderful and blessed life is. Now I'd like for you to take in a deep breath and bring back all the good feelings you have right now with you as you slowly stretch your body. We're gonna listen to our bell. And open your eyes when you're ready. You did a great job. Thank you so much everyone for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful week.